This is the week seven press conference with Travers family head football coach Justin Wilcox prior to Cal's trip to number 22 Pitt on Saturday in Pittsburgh. We're going to go ahead and get questions started with Jeff Parado from Cal Bears on SI. Good morning, Justin. I wonder if I can get some uh, availability updates. Um, I presume there's nothing new on Merriweather or Grace. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, wondering how Batacani and Little John are doing. And uh, Fernando took a couple of big hits. I'm wondering how he's feeling a couple of days later. And also you, you alluded to checking in to seeing how Jay Knott was doing since he didn't play a lot late in the game. Yeah. Uh, the receivers, there's no change in their status. Uh, Batikani, uh, questionable. Uh, Ott, probable. Uh, Fernando's playing. And Little John, questionable. And are you able to tell us anything about Jaden's status as probable? Did he suffer a, a setback in that game? Yeah, there was, uh, you know, he, he's been battling through some stuff this season, as we all know. And he's, uh, you know, he really wants to be out there and, and doing his best. And, uh, you know, just uh, it's a physical game. It's one of the unfortunate realities of football is uh, things happen from time to time. So he'll he'll get back as soon as he possibly can. I know he was working real hard at it, and we're looking forward to having him back uh, as soon as possible. He looked pretty good on that long pass reception for the touchdown. I take it something after that uh, caused uh, a setback? Correct. And, and with J with uh, Fernando, um, meanwhile, are you concerned about him leaving himself open to some pretty severe hits? Yeah, we don't want our quarterback taking a lot of hits. Um, there's times that you know we got to do a better job protecting, and then there's times on a couple runs or he, he's got to protect himself. You know, uh, unfortunately, late in the game on a critical down right there, uh, you know, we got to do whatever, whatever we got to do to to try and get the first down. But we never want we don't want him taking uh, any any more unnecessary hits than he needs to. He's he's also a guy that. You know, isn't he's not real keen on sliding and going down. That's not really in his mental makeup. So we're working with him on that. And if I could stay with one more thing, um, did you guys file any sort of a um, response to the ACC on the non-call on the the targeting play? Uh, we have a protocol that we go through each and every week to turn in plays to the conference. Um, and I also know uh, Jim. It has been in communication with the ACC. Did you get a response from them at all or not? Uh, yeah, I mean, that's I don't, I don't think I'm going to discuss that now. It's not something for me to to talk about. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, Steve Croner with the SF Chronicle. Justin, good morning. Um, I know you said after the game that, you know, you don't have time to feel sorry for yourself, that by Monday you, you've got to start looking at Pitt and put it behind you. And I understand that, and that's certainly the the mindset you want to have. But being honest and open, whatever, that loss was not, quote, unquote, a, a typical run-of-the-mill loss that you're easily able to put behind you. I would think you got to kind of run a, uh, a balance of acknowledging that with your team without uh, becoming immersed in it, if you know what I'm saying. How do you, how do you uh, negotiate that balance? Acknowledge uh, that losses are difficult and they're all, you know, whenever, whenever you suffer a loss, you got to learn something from it. And uh, we learn those lessons. We hit it head on. We, you know, we look at the tape. We don't bury the tape and, and not think about it. We look at the tape and uh, look at the things we did well and then uh, correct the things that we need to do better. And we do that every Monday. And uh, yeah, I mean, is it an, is it an emotional game? Uh, very, very disappointing finish. And uh, we have to learn from it. You know, that, that's what our job is as coaches and, and players, and they did a good job of that, and we were back at it yesterday. Very good. All right, Jim McGill, Baron Snyder. Justin, can you talk a little bit about that big 77-yard reception late in the fourth quarter to Restrepo? It looked like um, the linebackers passed him off, and maybe it was a broken play where somebody uh, missed their responsibility covering him. Um, it was hard to tell. Can you Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, it was a busted coverage. Yeah, it was, uh, 
unfortunate. Uh, we didn't have many busts during the game on defense. Didn't mean we always played great, obviously, but that was a busted coverage. Was that nickel responsibility? Yeah, the guys on the team made a mistake, and uh, it's unfortunate. We busted the coverage, and then we weren't able to get him down uh, earlier, you know, in the down, and he made a, a guy or two miss, and then it was a big explosive play. So disappointing, and uh, we have to do a, a better job as coaches. Um, it was late in the game, and uh, again, like I said, most of the game, it was real clean. Again, didn't mean we played great, but we didn't have a lot of busts, and that, that was a bust. And then take a look at, a, at the film. Is there much that you would have done differently in the fourth quarter? Did it feel like maybe you took your foot off the pedal a little bit early to protect the lead, or um, do you just feel like it was an execution issue? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure what you mean by foot off the pedal. Everybody was competing very hard. Uh, we as coaches, players knew what type of team they had. Um, we called everything. Uh, we were looking at, you know, what, what we're trying. What we're trying to do to put the, the guys in the best position to be successful. Uh, we struggled in the fourth quarter, really in every area, uh, in offense and defense. Um, there's 10 to 12 plays at least on each side, and we just got to make one of them, and we didn't. You know, whether it's a, a tackle, a pass rush, we, we really struggled to rush late in the game. And then when we did pressure, we were not covering great. Um, you know, offensively, trying to get some yards, get a first down. Uh, we had a couple – there was a tip ball interception that we weren't able to come up with. There's just a, a number of things, and we didn't make, uh, make those plays. And so we got to do a better job executing. We will always be critical and looking back on what can we do better – what, what would we like to have called differently? Uh, I mean, any time there's an un unsuccessful play, it's obvious that, well, if it was unsuccessful, yeah, I mean, I, would you call something different? Of course you would. And then there's times, I mean, you, you, you also have to look at the execution of the play and what are you trying to get out of it? And, uh, you know, you can't, you can't double every receiver every time. You can't zero blitz them every time. And uh, we just did not do a good enough job as a team. And that's coaches and players with shared responsibility. We did not, not do a good enough job late in the game against a very talented uh, group of players. And, and they came back and won it. Okay, thanks. Emmanuel Macedo, Daily Cal. Good morning, Coach. Tensions were high in the late stages of the game last week. I wanted to ask, what's the message that you're going to give to to the team to kind of avoid that situation from happening again? Yeah, it's, football's an emotional game. You got to learn to channel those emotions. Um, and I think young guys, especially sometimes in, in that environment, you know, it gets the best of them. So we got to do a better job, uh, managing those emotions and channeling them in a way that helps us play winning football. All right, back to Jeff Rado. Justin, your running backs carry the ball just 15 times for 23 yards against uh, Miami. Um, obviously not what you want. Um, how concerned are you about the running game production? Um, and Besides the fact that Jaden has been banged up, how do you attribute the problems? Yeah, we, we obviously want to run the ball better than that. I mean, uh, the running game, um, it was a struggle. Uh, we, we couldn't get much going, kind of our traditional run game. And uh, we got to do a better job there. There's some tough matchups up front. They beat us on some stuff. Um, yeah, we've got to find ways to run the ball more effectively. Uh, I would say the, uh, you know, the, the play count you mentioned, I mean, I think at the end of the game, I don't know if it was right around 90 to 50, you know, they ran 90 plays and we ran 50, give or take a play or two. And, and uh, that's, that's, that's not good. You know, it's very, very difficult to win uh, when the play count is nearly double for the other team. And so we got to find ways to stay on the field. We got to, convert third downs. We have to, you know, we had some really good kind of one play hitters, you know, the shots, you know, the fourth and one, the big play to Tron, the screen game. Uh, there, there was some shots that we hit and uh, we've got to do, we got to get more out of the normal down and distance offense. And, and uh, you got to have, give them credit too. That, that front is extremely talented. Uh, they were very difficult for us to block at times. And uh, we got to, as coaches help help our players uh, find ways to be more successful on those normal down and distance situations. When you have four plays of 50 yards or more, which I think Cal hasn't done in at least a dozen years, should that open up some things with your run game? And, and do you hope that it has that effect going forward when 
teams scout you? Um, yeah, that's, I think, you know, you have to look at each of those plays individually and how did we win on that play? Um, I don't, you know, their coverage is where their coverage is. They didn't change a whole lot. They did what they did. Um, I think, you know, Jeff, the, the biggest uh, challenge was the uh, up front, you know, the, the D line, uh, the interior D line, the edge players, the inside backers. And uh, we were having a, you know, we didn't, we got to do a better job uh, running the football just in our traditional run game and, uh, you know, inside zone encounters and pin and pulls and those type of things. Um, and, and that was a challenge for us in that game. So we got to continue to find ways to, to help our players be successful in those situations. Thanks. All right, Steve Broder. And what uh, distinguishes Eli Holstein uh, in particular and Pitt's offense in general? They're playing really, really well. Um, obviously, statistically, it jumps out at you, and then you watch them play on tape. Um, I mean, I think, uh, you know, they've scored 70. They've scored 50. The lowest they scored, I believe, is 28. Uh, and then the other ones were, you know, 30s. And so they're putting up a lot of points. They're throwing the ball all over and running the ball for almost a couple hundred yards a game. I mean, just – offensively they're performing at a really high level he's a very good quarterback he's statistically you know in the uh, top 15 in virtually every category uh, so he's a very talented football player you know he can throw the ball he's got anticipation um really good he's accurate he can move like he can do a lot of things well they have some very good receivers uh the tight end is a good player the running back is a talented man uh, young man and uh so very very efficient explosive offense you don't score 70 or 50 on accident so yeah all right back to Emmanuel Macedo coach on Saturday after the game you talked about uh running out of gas what's the plan to kind of keep the team out of those type of situations come come pit yeah well the offense we have to stay on the field more and then defense we have to win on another third or fourth down uh, like I, I just told you, 90 plays of snaps on defense, um, you know, and then the fourth quarter, uh, in the second half, I think they were four for four or three, three or three on fourth downs. Um, and so they kept drives alive. And offensively, we were not good, on, not good on third downs in the second half, uh, not good on third downs throughout the day, but in the second half. And so when you're not converting and then the other team converts three fourth downs, I think in that second half, I mean, they're going to be on the field more. So you have to get off the field on defense. And you got to stay on the field on offense. And that's how you keep from running out of gas. Um, you got to stay healthy. You know, we uh, losing Ryan McCullough in the game uh, was noticeable. I think everybody, you know, the, the pass rush, that was uh, a challenge. And, and so, yeah, all those things matter. All right, two more questions. We're going to Jeff first. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, Ryan McCullough, what is his status? Um, questionable. We'll see where he's at uh, later this week. And can you talk a little bit about um, the play you're getting from Nate Burrell? We're going to be talking to him later, and it seemed like he had a mostly productive game the other night. Yeah, Nate's uh, gotten better and better since he's been here. He's a, a, a good young man. Really enjoy having him on the team. He's come a long way. I think he uh, checked in his freshman year when he got here. He's like 240 pounds or something, and he started – Maybe the third game of his freshman year, whatever game that was, we went to the second game at Notre Dame as a 17-year-old, I think, at the time. And he's grown up a lot since he's been here, uh, gotten better and better. He can do some good things, and we really need uh, Nate uh, to continue to grow as a player. But really, really glad he's he's on the team. Okay, thanks. And last question for Jim McGill. I forgot to ask about Miles um, Williams' health status. Uh, BMW? No. Big Miles? Safety. Oh, uh, Miles, fine. He'll play this week. Okay. And do you have a sense yet, early practice this week, um, how the team has regrouped from uh, a real disappointing loss that you feel like you might have been able to have? Sometimes teams can get down and it hard, it's hard to shake it off. Do you, do you feel like the team's resilient enough to, to play their best ball on Saturday, or is it still kind of TBD throughout the rest of the week of practice? Oh, I feel like they're a very resilient group. We've had 
a couple of very, very disappointing and difficult losses. Um, and, you know, that's frustrating and it's uh, painful. I mean, it's a, a kick in the gut when you don't uh, win those games that you feel like you're capable of winning. Um, but there's there's no other way. You know, there's not a lot of options. I mean, you have to get back at it. Uh, we don't have time, the luxury of having a week or two weeks to feel down and out. I mean, you you got to learn your lessons, take your medicine and and push forward. And they've done a good job of that. They're, uh, you know, a strong minded group. Uh, I, I believe in them. I know we can win those games. They know that we can win those games. It's disappointing that we didn't. Now it's it's. Uh, we got an unbelievable opportunity against a top 25 team on the road uh, who's undefeated in a conference game. So there's a lot to play for. There's a ton of motivation there. We have a prideful group, and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to have finishing this week of practice and, and having the chance to go compete again, and I know our players are too. Thanks. All right, thank you, everyone. We'll be back in about 10 minutes with defensive coordinator inside by Coach Peterson. Uh, hey, the one thing I do want to say is I really want to acknowledge our the fans and the students who were unbelievable uh, the entire day last last uh, Saturday. I mean, that experience uh, with the students, our alumni, and our fans, and our administration, Jim Knowlton and his staff, who set all that up uh, the entire day, that experience for, for Cal football was amazing. Obviously, it's uh, disappointing that we were not able to finish the game off that that uh, we wanted to give them. But uh, really want to say thank you to all those folks, the fans, the students and our administration for for doing what they did to create an unbelievable environment. So thank you. Thanks, Coach.